Yes. Okay. Today we're making spicy miso braised pork ribs. I'm excited to eat them. I'll see you guys at the end for the taste test. So here are a list of the things that you'll need for this recipe. Let's get into it. Start off by patting your ribs dry and then dry brown and season. I use salt, pepper, paprika, onion powder, garlic powder, cayenne pepper. And if you want maximum flavor, let that sit for a few hours or even better overnight. But if you don't have time, we can just skip on ahead to the next step. For our aromatics, chop up ginger, garlic and onion and set aside. Then time to make our sauce. Mix miso, mirin, hoisin, light soy sauce and strawberry jam into a bowl and add some cayenne pepper. Side note, add the cayenne pepper to taste. So if it's not spicy enough, go in with a bit more. If you've made it too spicy, add some brown sugar to kind of counteract the taste. That makes sense? So now we have everything ready, let's begin cooking. Start off by frying your ribs on a medium high heat until a nice golden brown. And don't be afraid to adjust the heat if stuff starts burning. You'd be surprised at how much flavor is on that crust. It's just ridiculous. This is thanks to something called the Maillard reaction, which occurs when proteins and sugars are heated together. And this reaction results in so many products. And the combination of all of these products is just insane flavor. Anyway, I digress. Make sure to give all six sides of the ribs some attention and remove your ribs from the pan. Lower the heat to medium and go in with your onions and fry them for about 30 seconds or until slightly soft, not fully soft just yet, slightly soft. Then go in with your ginger and garlic and fry that all together until soft. Then add the sauce and stir to combine. Next up is the liquid and in this case we're going to add 450 milliliters of liquid and we're using chicken stock. Do keep in mind though, if your chicken stock is really flavorful, you don't want it to overpower the other flavors going on in the dish, so you might want to turn it down with some water. In my case, I added 150 milliliters of chicken stock because it was quite intense and 300 milliliters of water to get the 450 ml. Obviously vice versa, if you don't have as intense chicken stock, go in with more chicken stock or even use the full amount or go in with just a tiny bit of water to make up the rest if that makes sense. Does that make sense? And once you've added all that water in, nestle in your ribs. The liquid should cover about three quarters of the ribs. If it's not, don't be afraid to go in with a bit more chicken stock or a bit more water until it does. Cover and into the oven on 150 degrees Celsius for about 40 minutes. And in this time, you can do some washing up. And here's an explanation on why braising gives us tender meat. So why do we get tender meat from this? So whenever you have meat that's really tough to chew, chances are it's because of the connective tissue inside the meat, which is primarily made up of a protein called collagen. So if we want tender meat, we have to do something about the collagen. Braising is when we slowly cook something in a moist environment and as we braise, the collagen transforms into gelatin. Gelatin can absorb a lot of moisture, which causes our meat to be tender and mouth-watering good. Does that make sense? Okay, so it's been 40 minutes. Take your ribs out and give the exposed side, the side that's facing up, some attention in that liquid. So flip them over and then cover and into the oven again for another 40 minutes. And then after these 40 minutes, take it out and they should be fork tender. If they're not, don't be afraid to just cover it back up, put it back into the oven for like 10 or 15 minutes, take it out, check. And if they're not, again, just repeat this process until they are. Does that make sense? Remove your ribs from the pan, then pass that liquid through a sieve and add some ice cubes and chill in the fridge for a few hours. I left mine overnight and you should have a nice layer of fat just to skim off. I don't actually know why we do this. I'm gonna... So the number one reason on most sites I'm looking at seems to be health, which makes sense, just excess fat and stuff. I'm seeing a couple sites say that um, if you leave the fat in there, it adds too much flavor for the final product. So it kind of makes it lighter, but I guess it doesn't, like it doesn't really remove anything from it. It's just maybe a bit too intense on the palate. That's what I think. Then add this into the pan and simmer until desired consistency is reached. In my case, I wanted it to, you know, kind of just glaze the back of a spoon and also leave a bit of a trail when you kind of drag the spoon across it. And this is really gonna deepen that flavor and just make it taste incredible. Once it's at this stage, add your ribs back into that pan and kind of on a low heat, on a very low heat, because you don't want your sauce to burn or evaporate more moisture and get thicker. Just let everything come up to a nice, nice temperature. Also just check every now and then just to make sure your sauce isn't burning. It shouldn't, but just check. <laughs> 
for about 20 minutes I'd say and then plate as desired and now you have beautiful spicy braised miso pork ribs. It's tender, a bit sweet, a bit spicy. That miso flavor just pulls through beautifully. Just a beautiful mouthfeel. Oh, this is, this is what I like to eat.